Thank you for joining me today. Before we get started, I want to take a minute to tell you about a new app called Get Upside that we at the Rideshare Guy have been using to save up to 25 cents per gallon on gas. Pretty awesome. The app is completely free to use. All you have to do is upload your receipt after you buy gas and then cash gets added to your account. The cash adds up over time and you can deposit your funds straight to your PayPal account whenever you want. Some drivers are using GetUpside to save $50 per week just buying gas from their favorite gas stations. So now listen closely because this deal gets even better. I'm going to give you a short code that'll get you an additional $0.15 cents per gallon sign-up bonus. So you just download the GetUpside app from the App Store, open the app, and enter the promo code. It's WQ8JR. Now, another way you can get your $0.15 cent per gallon sign-up bonus is to visit the rideshareguide.com forward slash GetUpside app. That's G-E-T and then Upside, U-P-S-I-D-E, and then app, A-P-P. Check it out. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, Jay. Hey. All right, Dojo Nation, what a treat. This guy's so busy that we can't even do a, a podcast episode with him in his office. He's out there on the road getting new content, blazing trails so that we can bring you, the rideshare driver, the best, the latest, the most pertinent data and information for you and for your entertainment. So Harry Campbell, welcome again to the Dojo. Thanks for having me back. Luckily, I've got a good microphone handy, so it should be coming in loud and clear, and I'm ready to rock the dojo. Yeah, yeah, you're coming in great. You're coming in great. So a lot's happened since the last time uh, you and I spoke. Uh, Juno uh, recently went out of business. Uh, yep. Dar Dara K stuck his foot in his mouth, and uh, Uber <laughs> no longer has London. <laughs> so... Uh, do you have anything to share with us about any of those topics or what's on, what's the top of your mind right now? Yeah. I mean, I'll, I think top of my mind right now is uh, the story in London. I guess technically they're not kicked out of London, but their permit is going to be removed and they can pay up 21, you know, three weeks basically to contest it. But uh, London is a pretty big market. I think it's around four to 5% of Uber's, total rides around the world. But more importantly, it's sort of a gateway in Europe and a gateway worldwide that uh, a lot of regulators in the transportation space look to. So mm -hmm. sort of if London is going and regulating Uber, uh, then you can imagine a lot of other regulators in other cities and countries are going to do the same. Huh. And what was the reason that London said uh, no, more, no more Uber? What was the primary complaint? They must have been getting some kind of complaints from from either the passengers or the taxi drivers or what was the yeah. what was the main what was the big nail that that got hammered into the coffin there yeah so the official complaint was that the tfl which is i believe it's the transportation some f of london <laughs> something of london um basically found fourteen thousand instances so i think that fourteen thousand trips it may not you know it definitely wasn't fourteen thousand drivers but probably a handful of drivers did fourteen thousand trips in total and they weren't the trip. It wasn't the driver who it was supposed to be. So when they audited these trips, they found that it was some other driver. And to me, it's sort of a lot of details are now coming out. And it sounds like basically drivers were just sharing accounts. So if I have an account 
and you're a driver who wasn't approved to drive for Uber, you know, I let you take the night shift, for example, use my car, use my account, and then I probably took a little cut of your earnings, and maybe we look remotely alike, right? And uh, Uber doesn't really do much, you know, they do a selfie check once in a while, but it's pretty tough for them to catch that. And I think that it's very rare that that happens, but, you know, with 45,000 drivers in London, of course, that's going to happen here and there. And that happened 14,000 times? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't really been able to find hard numbers and dig into the yeah. CFL statistics. They sort of just announced the big, you know, bad thing that Uber did. And I mean, so that's the official reason. But to be frank, I think, you know, and it's a little tough for me because I'm not on the ground in London. We've had a couple posts from uh, Angelo, an Uber driver in London. And, you know, we chatted with him and I know a little bit about the scene, but I'm not on the ground. And so that always puts you at a bit of a disadvantage. But it does definitely seem like, you know, since day one, Uber and London, the city of London, have had issues. The black cabs in London are, you know, I mean, they're like, you think the taxi mafia here is strong. Like, they're like on another level there, right? And they're still, even to this day, you know, I think in America, taxis and Uber and Lyft drivers are kind of on the same side these days. And they're not battling like they used to. But it seems like in London, taxis and Uber drivers are still battling. And so there's definitely, you know, some backroom sort of shady stuff. And I think really... What it boiled down to was that Uber came into London and didn't have a lot of friends. And now that reputation is really sticking with them, even now when they're adding legitimate safety features. And they may not, you know, they may be just as safe as taxis or other options, but they're getting singled out. And, uh, you know, I mean, rightfully so, because, you know, they're a multi billion dollar company. It's sort of, you got to take the good with the bad. Yeah. I, um, I know that in London to become a taxi driver, it's very it's difficult. You have to uh, you have to know the city backwards and forwards. You have to take a really rigorous exam. So I think there's a quite a bit more pride um, in the in the taxi community there. And and yeah, I, I think they were probably a little insulted that this uh, the startup came in and suddenly, you know, everyone was yeah, taking but, it. I mean, even. For Uber drivers in London, though, they still have to pass a medical test. They have to pass a mapping test, which isn't the same as the knowledge, which is this really intense test that taxi cab drivers have to take. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also have to do one or two other small things. So I know the driver that we spoke with, it took him eight months, to, and he also had to get a TFL license. It took him eight months from the time he signed up to the time he was approved to drive for Uber in London. So mm -hmm. I think it may be more what you're describing. It, it may be more just a little bit of jealousy, a little bit of that pride, but there's definitely, uh, you know, it, it's not solely because of these violations. I, I can guarantee that. Right, right. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Well, the, so the taxi drivers, they're going to be a hip, hip, hooray before too long. Because they're going to have a monopoly yeah, in that I market. I wouldn't be so sure. I mean, you know, like I said, this is about 5% of Uber's market, and they still have opportunities to appeal. And, you know, when, when Uber doesn't want something to happen, they really have a lot of tricks up their sleeves. I mean, you're, we're talking a multi-billion dollar company, right? So they right. have a lot of resources at their disposal. And I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I would be surprised if they completely got kicked out and didn't go down without a big fight. Yeah, it's like AB5 here in California. Even though the law is going to exactly pass, we're not we're not going to see a whole lot of action um, occurring yeah. uh, in that regard. All right, cool. That's a lot of good insights. Thank you for that. And um, uh, what did you think when you saw uh, uh, Dara K uh, when he when he he slipped up on, on TV? Did you just think he just slipped up, or uh, yeah? I think that it was just a pretty basic, I mean, not basic. It was just a, a, a slip up. Yeah. <laughs> right? I think I'm allowed to swear on your podcast, right? Sure. Oh yeah. 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 We're, uh, it was just basically he messed up. Right. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it's, it's a tough situation. I think not only for him, but a lot of these companies that have, you know, taken money, money from people like the Saudis or taken someone with sort of a, mm. you know, shady background. And, and it's tough for a lot of these, companies and CEOs, you know, I know there's a lot of issues right now with the NBA in China, for example, right, where mm -hmm. you don't want to sacrifice your whole business to make this one little point. But at the same time, you kind of have to stick up for what's right. And, you know, for him in that situation, he's just trying to say the right thing. And he screwed up, you know, he should have come out a lot stronger since this was such an egregious case, I think. Yeah, but, yeah just just uh, just just for the uh, anyone out there who doesn't know what we're talking about. Um, Dara Kay was on a uh, HBO TV show, 
and he made he made the comparison that um, what was it that that a uh, one of the dr- driverless cars self driving cars self driving yeah. cars killing somebody is an accident just like the death of the journalist uh, Khashoggi uh, who was killed by by uh, the crown prince so he yeah. he made the comparison that those were equal kind of in, in severity. <laughs> And uh, he yeah. got he got tremendous pushback, and he did take it back the next day. Um, right. Yeah. And I mean, I think someone from you know I don't know all the details, but I mean I believe someone from you know basically very closely tied to the clo- the crown prince is literally like sitting on Uber's board, right? So right. It's sort of like you know what do you say about this when you already you know you come to the company you have someone on the board like that could end up hurting the company more than what he said, right? If he right. Like, says something too far in the other direction. So it's not a, a good position to be in. But I mean, I think that's why he's paid the big bucks because he has to figure out and navigate, you know, these multi-hundred million dollar investors with sort of what a uh, company's image is. And, you know, it's definitely a, a tough yeah. job, probably not one that I and would want to do anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, um, let's shift gears here and talk about the rideshare guy and kind of, kind of our plans for, well, for two for twenty twenty, so sure, yeah. So you've mentioned a lot uh, lately that we're, you know, we're going to put um, some more f- emphasis on um, Plan B stuff, like life after rideshare yeah. rideshare driving, and um, that's something I've been talking about ever since I started the podcast. And uh, some of my some of the best podcasts have been about um, Nathan Dalton, who's out there. Uh, doing doing notary being a notary, you know, a mobile notary signing yeah. agent, and then then my friend Jeremy, he's doing it now also. In fact, my ex wife okay. is out there doing it <laughs> as well. <laughs> and and so we're signing up a lot of public notaries. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, they and they work together. Nathan started his own kind of signing business, so when he has overflow, he turns it over to the other people in his in his company now. So, um, so and that's a great great Plan B success story. Um, so can, can you, uh, just share, share with the, 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 the drivers out there, you know, what, uh, kind of what you're thinking in terms of, uh, you know, great content to support them to, you know, see a bigger picture and, and to set some goals and to go at it and, and prepare for life after rideshare driving. Yeah. Well, I think one thing that we've noticed over the years is that obviously Uber and Lyft is a very attractive job, especially at the beginning or uh, temporarily or, you know, in certain situations or for certain people or certain times. But what we also see is that, you know, sometimes because of the company's lowering rates or not treating drivers well, people are moving on to other things. Or what I also say is sometimes if you're a really figure out the system and kind of hack it, you might be able to make a better job for yourself. You might be able to get a better career and make more money with something that's more stable than Uber or Lyft driving. This is just kind of what we identified as we started looking at, okay, what are these other jobs that people are going to? And I think that we're always going to be known for the Uber or Lyft content. That's not going anywhere on a daily basis, we're covering Uber and Lyft and what's going on. So if you just want to drive Uber or Lyft for the rest of your life, the rideshare guy is for you. But if you're someone who is interested in the next step in your career, or you only want to do Uber and Lyft temporarily, or you're just fed up with doing Uber Lyft, we're trying to provide opportunities for those people. And there's two paths that I sort of see. One is in the transportation space. If you love driving, and a lot of Uber and Lyft drivers do. I mean, as a driver, you put a lot of miles on your car, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Spend a lot of time in the car. So if you want to graduate to something that is more of what I call a professional driving job, we're going to, you know, we've been detailing some of those jobs. I mean, I know you went out and drove a, a taxi for a couple of weeks, right? right so right. that would be one example um, of graduating, you know, in a more of a professional job. There's chauffeur jobs, there's limo jobs, there's building your own business. So that's one area. And then the other one that I think you've covered and done a lot of great stories and reporting on is what we're calling life after rideshare, but it's more jobs that line up with the entrepreneurial spirit of Mm. being a driver. So like when I heard that podcast with Nathan and him being a notary, I mean, he's literally using an app, right? To Mm -hmm. get his clients at the start. I mean, it sounded just like Uber or Lyft, but a notary. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And the nice thing about Uber and Lyft. So I think that there there are, if you're doing a good job driving, there are a lot of skills that translate over to running a business. And I mean, frankly, this is what I tell people and drivers all the time, whether you realize it or not, 
driving for Uber and Lyft is a business. Yes. And so a lot of the skills that you're learning, right? I mean, think about all this, the income, the expenses, the taxes, those are all the same requirements of like a multi-million dollar business. You know what I mean? Right. We're all, we're, the, right. Rideshare drivers are entrepreneurs, whether they like it or not. Right. The, the, yeah. They have so to... once you kind of. Go ahead. What's it? Yeah. So once you kind of understand that you're a business owner and you're an entrepreneur, if you have other interests that line up with that, that's what we're trying to find. Right. So I think we've already done content on public notary. Uh, we have real estate in the pipeline, real estate agents, um, you know, really just anything. I've done, we've done census worker. Right. We've done all of these sort of random or odd jobs that they have something to do you know, some sort of tangential relation to rideshare driving or being in the car or the entrepreneurial skills that yeah. you learn as a rideshare driver. I mean, it could even be, you know, going out and starting your own. We've got some content we've been doing on starting your own website and blogging and things like that, because there is a, a lot of uh, opportunities out there. And so it's not going to be a, a main focus of the site going forward, but it definitely we want to provide that, uh, that uh, option or that sort of transition for people who do want to do it. Yeah, yeah. I should definitely write an article uh, about coaching because, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, we have to take charge. And and oftentimes we do give advice when we're in the car. People will ask us, you know, what, what we think about this or that. And a lot of drivers have skills that they could be teaching to other people, things that they've even learned in the car, like how to be a good listener. Um, and this yeah. whole coaching arena works perfectly well with internet marketing as well. So there's yeah, so that's a good idea. I like the I like the coaching angle. I think obviously you and I and Sergio we've tested out some rideshare driver coaching, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been a slam dunk like I thought it would be. I think it is. It's been a lot tougher to convince drivers to pay fifty or seventy five dollars for a. 45 minute session, even though every single driver who's ever done a coaching session with us has come back and said like, wow, that helped me so much. Well, I think, <laughs> in, I think, I think in general people, people don't, uh, they don't understand how valuable it is to talk to somebody who's walked the path that you want to walk. Right. Yeah. And, and if you give somebody, you know, 50 minutes of a hundred percent of their, you know, your attention to solving their problems for them, um, it's so valuable. But yeah, but not yeah. everyone sees it that clearly um, uh, right off the bat. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we got a really cool email the other day from someone who did a coaching session with Sergio recently, and he basically told us literally in one day of driving after his session, he made the money back from the coaching session. Right. <laughs> and that was like, okay, I would love to use this as a testimonial, but it does seem like, I don't know. And I think that it's, it's at times, you know, some people – especially for drivers or entrepreneurs who are kind of do-it-yourselfers. They kind of want to figure everything out on their own. But I think it's a little bit of a mindset shift. Once you realize that there are people out there who are experts and you can actually really shortcut uh, your learnings or your, you know, sort of learning curve, mm -hmm. then you can actually like end up with much better either financial results or if it's a sport, for example, you're trying to learn, you know, you can get a lot better at golf quickly by taking a series. And it doesn't need to be, you know, coaching forever, but I think you can kind of like extract maximum value by doing, let's say one or, you know, even one coaching session, for example, ride share drivers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm a huge proponent of coaches. I have a life coach. I've got a business coach, and uh, yeah, it's so it's so valuable. And you're kind of in, in my life. You're kind of like a coach right now with this uh, with advertising. You know, you're teaching me how to do how to how to do the advertising for for the rideshare guy. I yeah. having people who yeah that actually people who you know, that reminds me of a yeah no I was just going to say no I was just going to say in general hang out with people you can learn from. You know, that's just a good yeah. life lesson. Hang out with people who are in in the position you want to be in and you'll learn, right? It's like in tennis. You always want to play someone better than you because that, that way you'll get yeah. better. Um, yeah. So what were you going to say? Yeah, I was just going to say that even reminds me of a, a company I spoke with today. They're called Gen M. So that's G-E-N-M. And mm -hmm. they're based out of Canada. But what I, I took the call with them because I was really more interested on my side to, to potentially use them to hire someone because what they do is they basically find kind of like young go-getters and match them up with small businesses who uh, are hiring, you know, they're, they're actually going to work for them as an apprentice. So it's unpaid, but it, you know, it might be 10 hours a week, but you learn a lot of skills, 
you get to add it to your resume. So let's say you're trying to become a digital marketer. You can't get a job because you don't have any experience. So they're sort of matching you up with someone that you can do a three to six month apprentice, apprenticeship with, learn, get the experience, and then go get hired. And once I started talking to them, I said, wow, well, you definitely got a customer in myself because I can always hire more and better people, especially those who are motivated and you know, kind of willing to work for free, for example, for three to six months to learn. Uh, but I also was thinking that from for drivers, you know, something like this might be super valuable. And so that's a cool company that I'm sure we'll be writing about in 2020. Yeah. Another company we might, we might be writing about is um, it's called Ducere, D-U-C-E-R-E. Yeah. And it's a global business school, which uh, I had my first call with uh, with the vice president of the company. And it's remarkable. They're offering a, a two-year MBA program for a ridiculously low price, which uh, you know could put a driver into such you know a stratosphere of income uh, once they've got that degree. So there's there's just great stuff coming down the road. It's very exciting for the rideshare guy uh, looking ahead into 2020. Anything else you want to throw in the pot here, Harry? I said 20 minutes. We're at 18 minutes, so I really appreciate your time. And it's always good to catch up with you. But uh, any last words for uh, the nation out there? Yeah, I think that about covers it. I know we're doing a lot of uh, great sort of daily uh, driver podcasts on yours. Obviously, I have my podcast and I've been, you know, shifted a little bit more toward the a high level or industry view. So I'm interviewing a lot of people on my podcast these days about more of the industry topics, whether it's ride share or mobility. And still have a driver on from time to time, but it's less about the, the daily grind of being a driver. And I think that's where your podcast comes in handy. I think the only other area that uh, we're spending a lot of time on is YouTube. I think YouTube is just a great platform right now for not only for us, but I think just everyone in general. I mean, anyone that I'm meeting these days that has some sort of entrepreneurial spirit or something to teach or something that they want to kind of create on their own, I tell them, go start a YouTube channel because it's amazing uh, just without much of a following. If you kind of find the right topic and the right niche, you can have one video blow up and that could literally be, you know, the start of your channel. Yeah, yeah. Good advice. Good advice. All right, Harry. It's uh, been a pleasure working with you for the last two years. I look forward to working f- with you for a long time. And uh, happy Thanksgiving uh, to you and your family. Thank you so much for for coming on the uh, podcast today. Really appreciate you finding the time in your busy schedule. Appreciate you having me on. And thanks to everyone in Dojo Nation for listening. All right. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna it's gonna automatically load up, and you're gonna get the next episode, and you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done, and uh, it's great. I really enjoy doing that. All right, next episode, more news, interviews, all things rideshare dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.